majority of, it's pretty rare that a patient is not a good candidate for an implant. Uh, the biggest uh, reason that an imp a patient would not be a uh, candidate for an implant is if they have inadequate bone to place the implant in. Uh, and the most accurate way that we have technology-wise now is to get a three-dimensional uh, image of the area that we're going to do the we're wanting to do the implant or implants in and with that technology we're able to put it on a computer that image on a computer software program and measure to a tenth of a millimeter accuracy of how much bones available what is the width of the bone the quality of that bone where are the sinuses where are the nerves that we have to avoid and uh, what size implant can we get in there lengthwise widthwise and is a grafting needed? So, but oftentimes with the imaging, you're able to find areas where you can place without grafting, making this, the procedure more simple. But that's the biggest contraindication if you just don't have adequate bone. That it that can always overbecome. But it just becomes more involved because grafting is required to create a place to put the implant. Uh, implant success uh, is in the mid 90 percent. Uh, again. Causes of failure will be inadequate bone like we've tested. Some medical conditions lower your chances of success. Uh, if you're an uncontrolled diabetic, tissues in the mouth and, and bone and gum tend to be less healthy, and so that's a, a real concern. Uh, some patients who have been on heavy doses of biphosphonates, the drugs like Boniva for uh, osteoporosis, if you've been on really heavy doses of those or even IV medication of that some, at some point, then that's a real contraindication because the bone healing's ability has been decreased. If you've been on mild doses of that for not a long, long time, usually it's no problem with proceeding with an implant. The other factor that is heavy smoking. Uh, if you're a heavy smoker, that does decrease the health of your oral tissues and it can decrease the success rate of implants. The uh, typical implant um, procedure itself um, is usually not that uh, difficult procedure, especially with the three-dimensional. The great thing about the uh, three-dimensional surgical guide is that there's no sutures or uncovering of tissues. You're actually, it's just done through a little punch like I show, uh, showed in the guide. And so it's kind of compared to open surgery if you're having a gallbladder versus the arthroscopic surgery, which is so much less invasive. So it helps with the healing time much that way. Uh, so the post-op discomfort is very, usually very minimal, uh, certainly less or not any more than having the tooth removed in the original situation. Uh, as far as the healing time, it varies from person to person depending on the situation. We usually like to have the implant in place for about three months before we hook the permanent restorations to them just to allow the body to totally integrate that implant. You will hear uh, talk about one teeth in one day and whatever, and we will always give the person something to wear that will function for them while that implant is healing. But to do, put a final restoration or final denture onto an implant day one, the research has shown that your success rate goes down. So it's usually a, a three-month holding period for the total healing to happen.